The text for our Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, from Isaiah the prophet, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you, who act for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in their ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your, your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not your iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Family and friends, this passage of scripture for First Advent is one in which Isaiah pleads in the strongest possible terms for God to come. Isaiah desires this great and mighty king, his great and mighty king, to come and set his sick, aching world right. It is a call that is fulfilled in an unexpected way. The imagery is strong and violent. Isaiah's lament and call the Lord is, please come quickly and tear the heavens open. The desire of the prophet is understandable. Judea, southern Israel, is described this way. This is Isaiah's world. We sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. Isaiah uses strong language. He is in unflinching in his description of Judea's sins, which are worse than being ritually polluted and separating them from God. Notice how Isaiah includes himself. Together, they, Israel, Judea, the old church, appear with their individual and also collective sins to be beyond help, and they appear to be beyond hope. He says it this way of that situation. We all fade like a leaf on our iniquities, like the wind, they take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. He quotes King David, Psalm 37 and 103. The flowers of the field, they wither and they die, the wind passes over them, and the place is known no more. With these words from David, Isaiah quickly draws us down into the heart of what is at stake. Overwhelming sin and guilt, and the only way out is that God must act and God must save. But there's a call and a cry. The sin, the uncleanness, and the hopelessness for the lost world and wind-tossed condition of his people breaks Isaiah's heart, and in this anguish it surges within him to call out and cry to the Lord for compassion and to come. Come and tear the heavens open, he says. Make mountains tremble cause nations to quake. Come, Lord, bring your burning and purifying presence to burn away what is wrong and polluted evil, just as dry brush is thrown into a burning fire and is consumed, burned away. Is this vengeance? No. No. This is a cry for justice and compassion. Isn't that we want for our world too? 
Yes, there is evil and sin, and it is disgusting. We can make quite a list of it, done in God's name, done against God's people variously, all manner of twist and turn, which the Lord despises, hates, and which we are called to address as well. But to address all in it, including ourselves, with God's justice and compassion, forgiveness, law, gospel, message, that he has come. There is evil and there is sin, and it is disgusting. However, with humility and sorrow, we, are also, we also need to know that we are included with Isaiah in the great tally of those who are sinful. But judgment will come, we know that. Before then, however, we each need justice and compassion, help and the presence of God to save us, save all humankind, and save creation itself. There is something at the heart of Isaiah's lament and plea. He trusts in the unswerving faithfulness, the steadfast love of God, and to this he appeals. We read, From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you and their ways. And then a little further, but now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. What do we find here? God is a creator, and there is none like him. This is an appeal to the beautiful mystery of the creation told to us in Genesis 1 and 2, and also the first commandment given to the Lord, given by the Lord to Moses, and of course to us. Isaiah acknowledges this for himself, and he shares it with his people. Isaiah reminds himself and his people that this creator God acts for those who wait him joyfully worship him with acts of righteousness and remember him for what he has done. This is faith and trust in him. Isaiah says of himself in Judea, the people of promise, we are the clay. We are all the work of your hand. We are all your people. Parallel to each phrase is a statement claiming and pleading with the Lord to remember his steadfast love, his steadfast covenant. And he starts the discussion with, you are our father. Then for clay, God is our potter. For being his created work, there are two pleas. Be not so terribly angry and remember not iniquity forever. As for being the Lord's chosen people, Isaiah boldly calls God, God's attention, to behold, behold and please look. This is how Isaiah boldly, brazenly even, reminds God himself of his relationship with his people, with humanity, with all creation. To this God he pleads, come, come, tear the heavens open. And the heavens are torn open. The impossibly high divide between God and humankind is smashed. God breaks through that which separates him from his creation, just as a baby breaks through the womb into life, and through the second Eve, the Virgin Mary, Jesus also breaks into our world. The Creator world, Word, God himself, the king holding the universe together and ruling it with his grand mysterious designs comes to his people, just as every king, queen, ruler is, does as well. It is through birth. Our famous queen, Elizabeth, near 70 years on the throne, that's how she came to this world. So does Messiah, Jesus, Emmanuel as he is known, which means God is with us. The divide is smashed toward open, God is with us. Messiah is born, 
and then angels tear through the heavens to proclaim the deed. Messiah comes as a king to take captive hearts and minds, bodies, souls, his creation. He comes as potter for people of clay like Adam, his wife Eve, their families, all generations, to restore his workmanship and to give life. God and Jesus Christ has made life now and forever possible. He has burned the polluted filth of sin that keeps us, yes, you and me, together with Israel, Judea, and Isaiah, separate from God. The heavens divide, but yet there's another divide. Sin divides far, far worse, as it is the great divide of eternal death. This second great divide, Jesus also tears open with power and might of the resurrection. On the weekend of his crucifixion, the graves and tombs split open, and the godly rose and roamed this planet. He has promised to split open the grave again and call forth all, all in a day of justice and judgment. Knees bowing, hands and hearts raised for those who acknowledgement and joy say, yes, here you are and we're with you because of what you've done. Now we know there is judgment and justice. For some will be compulsed, they'll be under compulsion to confess this as well, but to their shame. But Jesus, as the one who has rent the heavens wide, and torn open the skies, torn open the divide between himself and ourselves, torn open death himself, does not desire that end for anyone, but instead has come to rescue. Jesus has torn open the heavens. He has torn open the grave. And to do so, he became the polluted and sinful one, judged and condemned to death, so that neither you nor I would be judged nor die eternally. Die eternally. Instead of judgment, we receive justice. Instead of death, we receive life. The gift that this king gives are those that overcome the divide between God and mankind and include the divide between death and life. And this is what we are to proclaim out of him who has done this for us. For why is he broken open the heavens, rent them apart, torn them apart, turn open the grave itself to save, to save again? And he calls us in faith and trust to believe these things for ourselves, for others as well. And this is what we share the church of Advent, of his coming, even in this year, that the divide between mankind and God, between death and life, has been torn open, torn open. Jesus has done this to answer Isaiah's plea and lament. He has done it for mankind. He has torn open the heavens for you. Amen. We pray. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we give you thanks that you've torn open the heavens, come to us, Emmanuel Jesus, and given us life. In you, nothing can separate us from Father God, from love, from resurrection. You've given to us, your church, the gifts of life and hope, communion and baptism. All the words of your scriptures, you yourself in presence. Holy Spirit, remind us of these things again and again in this Advent preparation season for Christmas, when we celebrate this birth of Jesus, the Christ child then, who as full Messiah, resurrected after crucifixion, has won life for us. And in this give us peace, peace which passes all understanding, to truly keep the whole of our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto resurrection day, everlasting life. Amen. And may he, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you now and always. Amen.